I guess most of you saw the recent brilliancy in Accelerated Dragon by Fabiano Caravana against Jan Nepomniachtchi in Singfield Cup. And you may wonder, what is this Accelerated Dragon? Why it is so dangerous? And can I play it in my own games? In this video, I'm going to show you this game as a dialogue between two players and I'm going to show you lots of lines and a complete understanding of Sicilian Dragon and Accelerated Dragon and many traps in this variation. You're going to enjoy this video and you're going to learn a lot of things. So please follow this video till the end and like this video. Jan Nepomniachtchi started this game with a king pawn move and Fabiano Caruana replied with Sicilian defense. He says that I'm going to play Sicilian because I need win in this game. Nepo says, okay, finally I got the game. Nobody's Fabian is not going to play e5 against me, so knight f3, okay, let's play for a win. And here comes the real surprise, I'm going to play Accelerated Dragon against you. I'm courage enough to play this line against you. Why Accelerated Dragon? Let me show you the classical dragon. This is open Sicilian, and here, like, we have knight, dwarf, everything, and g6. This is classical dragon, bishop comes to g7 in this long diagonal plays a very important role, but white plays bishop b3, bishop c4, Yugoslav attack, and might checkmate black in the king side. And this pawn on d6, it uh, come, black players come to this understanding that it might not be very beneficiary on d6. So let's play g6 in the second move, and do not touch this pawn. We might later use it in one role with d5. You, you, you will understand. Nepo says, okay, let's, let's play. This is a real game. Knight takes d4. I'm not going to play queen takes d4 against you because this is a drawish line. So knight takes d4, bishop to g7, knight to c3. Here Nepo could have played c4, which Fabiano said he was expecting something like this because this comes as a surprise. But probably Nepo prepared this variation for Hikaru Nakamura in the candidates because Hikaru played this variation against Gukesh in the candidates and... In the later game, he played. He was playing against Nepo, so he probably prepared for this variation also. So, knight c6, attacking the center, bishop b3, defending the center. And this is the main time you have this variation. Knight to f6, a very tricky move. White should be very careful. Some of the very normal moves are not good in this position. For example, queen d2 will be met by knight g4, and this monster bishop will go off the game, and this bishop will become a superstar in this game. So, queen d2 is wrong. What about f3? If white plays f3, black simply plays castle and you cannot play queen d2 here. Of course, everything is not very good here because white is black is playing d5 in one role. You didn't play d6 and then d5. You play d5 in one move and this is fantastic for black. White, uh, white center is in a lot of pressure and if you take, I will take b file is open. If you castle, you are going to checkmate yourself. This bishop, look at this monster on this diagonal. So. It is not going to work, so f3 is not good, so white should play bishop c4, a normal move. This move prevents d5 in many lines, protects the queen side, especially it goes to b3, and attacks the king side. In this position, black has moves like d6, coming back to normal dragons, queen a5, preventing the Yugoslav attack, which I might record another video if you like, and please write down in the comments, do you want to record another video on this accelerated dragon with queen a5, which Magnus Carlsen, for example, played it against Rajabov. So this is a very, very important line. But after bishop c4, Fabiano plays castle. Let's play the main line. Bishop b3, very important once again. If you play f3 here, black can play the move queen b6. Very dangerous and very tricky. You might think that, okay, b3, b3 is hanging, I play bishop b3, but now knight takes e4. And black is going to win this game. Bishop takes d4, winning a pawn. And there is no way to, 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 to play for a good position here. And uh, so f3 is, is wrong. f3 is wrong because of queen b6. You should, you should know these variations. This is, this is very dangerous. If you play queen d2 again, knight g4 is completely okay. So bishop, so after this, bishop b3 is the move. In this position, many, many black players play, some players play queen a5, which in this position doesn't work so much. But a5 is another move, a5 with the idea of to play a4 and preventing this long castle by white. And if you play a5, white in many positions play castle, a4, knight takes a4, knight takes e4, knight b5, b6, something like queen e2, c4, which is very interesting and we might cover it in later videos. So this is also very interesting, a5 is another line, but Fabiano plays d6 in this position. With d6, he says, okay, I'm going to play this Yugoslav kind of version. And after f3, queen a5. 
and exactly this move played by uh, Hikaru Nakamura. And Fabiano said that I was regretting my choice because Jan was playing so fast, so he he should he he had prepared this variation for Nakamura, but Nakamura didn't play it. And then okay, when when your opponent is prepared in Yugoslav attack, it's very dangerous. But let's see what happened in the game. Other moves are also possible. We should be seven is the main line, and once again a five is also possible. We should be seven rook c eight is the main line. But queen a five, queen a five, and here the main move here is queen d two. And Jan plays queen d3, for which, for my eyes and many players' eyes, it's like, mostly, why queen to d3? I mean, you're playing queen d2 to, in many lines to play bishop h6, trade this bishop. By why queen d3? Let me explain you. In queen d2 lines, in many lines, black takes on d4 and then plays bishop e6. And here, when you castle, black plays b5 and goes with b4, bishop takes b3, rook f c8, and this is dangerous, black attacks will come fast and white is in some kind of danger. So what Jan is claiming with queen d3 is in this line, I'm going to prevent this b5. You can no longer play b5 and I'm going to start my attack. This is what he wants. So Fabiano says, but okay, queen d3, knight d5, I'm going to gain a tempo. Now you're going back, okay, I gain a tempo. Bishop d7, castle, and rook fc8. And after king b1, knight c4, bishop c4, rook c4, this variation could have raised, like for example, if you if you consider here, like after f3, let's say bishop d7, queen d2, queen a5, castle. This is this is another line, rook f c8, like king b1, knight d5, like for example, g4, knight c4, bishop c4, rook c4. This is the same position with the g4 included. So white in this position, for example, plays h4 and has a very strong attack on the king side, opening the h file, playing in many positions. Knight goes back to e2 or b3. And then the bishop comes to h6 and white black is in a lot of danger but in this game in this game after this strange move order queen d3 knight d5 black reached the same position without g4 so this is very good this is very good and here g4 by jan which uh, fabiano said that after the game jan was claiming that the best move here is knight b3 and if you play queen a6 here, now e5 exists. You cannot take because knight c5, you lose material. You should sacrifice and exchange and white will win this game. So this is not possible. So you cannot bring your queen to a6. Then you should go to c7, which is not a good place. And now g4. This is, this is the right move order for white pieces. So, but okay, the game can go on. I mean, there is nothing wrong. Black can still play bishop b6 or bishop c6 or b5. This is, this is a very, very tough game and very sharp game. But... In the game, in the game, uh, after rook takes c4, Nepo played g4, and here a very, very subtle move by Fabiano Caravana. In this position, most of us probably will play rook ac8 automatically, but now g5 came. Okay, you don't, you are not in time to take on c3 because g takes f6 is coming. By the way, rook ac8 is, is threatening to take on c3. So g5, you need to go back, and here knight d5. And after queen takes d2, rook takes d2, white knight on d5 is strong. For example, this position can be reached, b3, rook c5, and white enjoying a good position in this position. And I mean, he has a good center, knight on d5. Whenever you want to play e6, your d6 pawn will be very weak, and you have a bad position. So this is what Fabiano was afraid of. And here he plays bishop b6. What he has in mind, if, if g5 plays, now, first of all, I can take on c3. Now a2 is hanging, so you can no longer play like this. Okay, this, this can be played, but this is very, very interesting, very interesting for black. I mean, it has a lot of attack coming at the black white king. This is, this is, this can be a line which black is completely okay, knight c4 check is coming. So, uh, this is one line, and he can also play knight here. And if you play knight d5, here white can take, like in positional way, and black can take this. And there is no knight on d5 to tolerate, so black is completely okay. Black is completely okay. So this is why we should be 6 important. You might wonder why why knight d6 is not good because this pawn is controlling everything, and your your attack on the king side is not low no, is no longer very very dangerous because there is an interesting line here. If you play h4, knight takes g4, and if you take rook takes c3, this is very interesting. If you take bishop takes c3, you are checkmated. So you should not take back, and you should play bishop d4 takes takes rook c7. This is like like a drawish 
drawish line like queen c5 and in many lines if you take on g6 i will take on d4 if you go back then g5 black can close the open the, the position so this is very interesting uh, it, it could have been played but nepotition took on e6 and now he played knight b3 but the difference is here i can play queen a6 and there is no more e5 because the bishop on d7 is not hanging so if you play e5 i will just simply take it and knight c5 okay what what queen c6 i'm just completely winning winning a pawn and winning the game so uh, in this position, after knight b3, Nepo, uh, Fabiano just simply played queen a6, and here, bishop to d4, okay, challenging this bishop on here, and rook a c8. With rook a c8, look at these diagonals, look at these diagonals, and this is going to be very dangerous. This is going to be very dangerous. Everything is coming, and here, Jan Napominiashi has 1 hour 57 minutes on his clock, and Fabiano has 1 hour 6 minutes. Okay, Fabiano is calculating, he, he, he didn't expect this line probably because he wasn't expected that Nepo is prepared for this game and he's not coming for Yugoslav attacks. The only move that keeps the balance in this position for white is queen g5 to prevent any kind of b5 because white has so, so many big threats also, but b5 is also coming. But here, Nepo quickly plays g5 in 6 seconds, he just thought for 6 seconds and it plays g5. And here comes the brilliancy by Fabiano Caruana, which is not very hard to spot. He sacrificed the knight on e4, and this is very, very interesting. If you take it with a the knight, then bishop rook takes d4. You cannot take back with the knight because you're going to be checkmated in two. So this is not possible. And if you cannot take it back, then, then what? This is just lost. This is just lost. So you need to take it with the pawn. Your queen is hanging your knight, and you need to take it with the pawn. And now bishop takes d4. And this is very, very interesting. Why, why this line uh, is, is, is very dangerous? Because after knight takes d4, I'm taking on c3. And here, a2 is hanging. You, you cannot take it. This is the problem. And knight takes e6, fortunately for black. Rook takes c2 exists. And here, whatever you do, you cannot survive. If you take here, then after rook takes c2, queen c4 check, you're going to lose this game. This is not possible. If you play queen d5, a very important move here is queen b6, which Fabiano accurately cal calculated it he, he, he thought for like 30 minutes in this position and he was thinking in this position is queen b6 playable or not because queen e2 assumingly this position will be draw because after here the queen is protecting this a2 square and after something like queen g2 rook hf1 it's a very very uh, strange position but the game will be will be finished in a draw like no no not not, not here e6 queen a5 and this position will be draw but uh, after this Queen b6 is the move to, to checkmate. You you should play you should play b3 because if queen b3, queen d4, I will just trade. Of course, on queen d4, I will take on e6, and you should take, I will take, and I'm two pawns up with black pieces. So after queen b6, b3, and now coming back to a6, threatening mate once again. If you play a4 now, queen e2 is a very, very big difference. Because if you play here, then your queen is no longer defending this a2, and you are going to be checkmated. So this is very interesting, very interesting stuff by Fabiano, very, very nice calculation, but his position was superior. And in this position, Nepo decided to not do this and plays a3. Here, even rook can come back to here, but queen c4 with strong, with pressure. If you take, once again, queen a2 is mate. If you take on e6, rook takes c2, once again, this is fantastic for black. Nepo plays b3 in the game, and now queen to c5, attacking here. You can play king b2, but then bishop g4. In the game, he plays rook c1. I don't well, know why he sacrificed. He gave up the pawn on a3. And after h4, bishop takes b3. I oh, know, first rook c5. I don't know. Here, bishop takes b3 doesn't work, huh? Okay, here it doesn't work because cb3 is defending. So, so Fabiano is very smart. He plays rook c5. And after rook f1, now he takes on b3. The, the, main, the main difference is, the main difference is here, for example, what, what happened if h5? Now rook a5 is coming. This is checkmate. So the plan is rook a5 checkmate. The main difference is, okay, here, if you go here, then I might play queen takes c3 and I'm not going to be checkmated. In the previous variation, the rook one's on c1 and queen a2 was checkmate. But here I can take on c3. But here bishop takes b3. And no, if you take on b3, rook takes b3, knight takes b3, queen takes b3. And here I have so many moves like queen, rook c2. If the rook was on c1, this was not possible and the game was draw. But rook c2, you should give up your queen, and then after... Oh, no, 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 queen takes c2. And here, black is going to win a lot of pawns, like most of them even with check. Even if not with check, look at this position, a queen and 
lost seven pawns, or even black lost the one pawn. So this was a very nice game. This this knight takes e4 by Fabiano was was very brilliant, very brilliant idea. But the the this this kind of stuffs are exist in 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 Sicilian Dragon and Accelerated Dragon. And I hope you enjoyed this game. This was a very enjoyable game for me. I hope this is the case for you. And if it, this is the case, please like the video. And if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that subscribe button and enjoy chess and life.